Hey, how's it going guys? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can use Python to import Google Sheets data to Microsoft SQL Server. Before we dive into the tutorial, I just want to say that this tutorial is not only limiting to uh, Microsoft SQL Server. As long as you're using a database that supports ODBC Connection Manager, then this material is going to work for your database system as well. And with that being said, let's get started. So here in my Google Sheets, I have a data set sitting on the data tab. This is the stock historical data, uh, belongs to Apple from December 1st, 2020 to December 31st. In this table we have, let's see, we have seven columns. The first column is the dates column, and it sounds uh, the uh, information relates to the stock price. And this is the data we're going to push over to Microsoft SQL Server database. And let's go to uh, Microsoft SQL Server. I created a table called stock data. And this is the uh, SQL script to create the table. And we run the select statement to make sure that there's no uh, record in the table. All right. To communicate with Google Sheets, I'll be using Google Sheets API. I make sure that you have the API service enabled. You also need to have a Google Cloud account. And to enable the uh, Google Sheets API service, you want to click on this navigation menu, then go to APIs and services, then go to library. And here you want to look for uh, Google Sheets. And click on Google Sheets API. And just make sure that this API is enabled. And once the API is enabled, we can start with the tutorial. All right, so I'll be using uh, two third-party libraries. One is the pandas library. Let me increase the font size. All right. If you don't have the library installed, you can use the command pip install pandas to install the pandas library. And to work with the database system. I'll be using the PYPY ODBC uh, library. I'll name this as ODBC. And you can install the library using the commit pip install PYPY ODBC. If you have worked with SQLite uh, Python library, then using PYPY ODBC is very similar to using SQLite. You will also need to download the source code to uh, this google.py file. As well as you will need to provide your own uh, client secret.json file. All right, so from Google module, I want to import a function called create service. This create service function will simplify the uh, Google API instance creation. All right, so we'll start with uh, getting the data from Google Sheets first. So we need to provide a couple of things. The first thing we need to provide is a client secret file. So let me go ahead and grab the file path. I can just use the name. And for the API name, it's going to be Sheets. API version is going to be uh, V4. And for the scopes, it's going to be HTTPS www.googleapis.com slash A-U-T-H slash spreadsheets. Now I can create the Google Sheets API service instance. So here I'm going to insert the create service function. And I'll name the output as service. Inside the create service function, I'll provide my client secret file, API name, API version, and scopes. And I'll create another variable called Google Sheets ID. And this is basically the uh, Google Sheets ID where the uh, data set is sitting. So here from the link, 
I'm going to grab the Google Sheets ID. Now we can make the uh, request code to extract the data set. So name the output response and from service the spreadsheets the values the gets. And here we need to insert the execute statement. All right. So inside the gets method, we need to uh, specify the spreadsheet ID. And this will be coming from Google Sheets ID. And for the major dimension, I want to uh, extract the table by rows. And for the range, and since I want to capture uh, all the data, regardless how many rows uh, is in this worksheet. So on the uh, data retrieval to be dynamic, just in case if I decide to insert additional records, then I want this script will be able to recognize those uh, newly added records. So here in the range parameter, I can just insert the worksheet name. And it doesn't need to be uh, case sensitive. I'm going to run the select code block. And it's going to ask me to uh, authenticate my account. So here I'm going to click on events and click on this link to proceed. So here I'm going to grant permission to my, um, to my script. All right, so once you see the message, the authentication flow has complete, then you can close this window. So on my console, if I print the response option, and that's going to return a dictionary. And if we look at the keys and the values, so all the records are stored in the uh, values key. Now let's grab the data set. Oh, so the first element is going to be the header and everything else is going to be the data itself. So we need to slice the data a little bit. So from response object, I want to reference the values key. And I want to skip the first row. So here I'm going to insert one colon to extract just the data. Once we have the data set from the Google Sheets, we can now push the data set to Microsoft SQL Server database. So here let me insert notes. Getting data set from Google Sheets. And this will be push data set to SQL Server or database system. To connect to a SQL Server database, we need to specify the driver, and it's going to be SQL Server, the server name. If you don't know your server name, here we can use the uh, server name function. So to add symbol, followed by the slash statement, this will return the server name. So I can just copy and paste to the server name variable and database name. My database name is going to be JJ. Here I'm going to create a function called connection string. This function is going to construct the connection string, which we'll need to provide to create the ODBC connection. So inside the function, we're going to provide the driver name, server name, and database name. Inside the function, I'll create a variable called connection string. And I'll insert the F string. Inside the function, we need to write driver. This goes to the driver argument. This should, this should be driver name. And make sure that you have three sets of curly brackets. Oh, I've got to insert the semicolon at the end. 
for the server, the parameter is going to be server. Then I'll insert the server name argument. For the database name, we need to uh, specify the value to the database parameter. We we'll also need to set the trust connection value to yes. In case if I are logging in with a credential, you will need to provide the username to the UID parameter, and it's going to be username. For the password, the parameter name is called PWD, and it's going to be password. So I'll put this on the top. Uh, just as notes. Then we can return the connection string variable. All right, so let's create our connection object. So connection object creation. To create a connection object, we reference the ODBC module dot connect and we set the connection string function. And I'll provide the driver name, server name, and database name. Inside the try block, I'll put a message connection created. I also want to capture the errors. So there are different errors that we can uh, manually capture. So the first error is the database error. In this exception error block, I'll put a message database error. I'll print the error message. If it is other than the database error, and this should be ODBC, then I just want to print the error message. And here, let's do this. Let's do connection error. This is going to be other than the database error. And the connection error might be involving your internet connection or the connection between uh, your computer and your SQL Server database. If the try block is executed successfully, then you will go to the else statement. Uh, actually, else block. Then we can create the cursor object. So from connection, I can set the connection method to create a cursor object. So this cursor object is basically the connection gives you the access to manage your tables. And to insert the records, we need to provide a SQL statement template. So I'll name the template SQL insert. And the insertion statement is pretty straightforward. It's going to be insert into stock data. So this is going to be the table name and values. And here, based on the element location, we can use the question mark to uh, insert that as a, a variable placeholder. So I'll show you in a second. So how many columns we have? We have seven columns, I remember. So I need to insert seven question marks. From the cursor object, I want to insert the execute mini method. So this method allows me to insert all the records in a single batch. So I'll insert the uh, SQL statement followed by the array object. In this case, it will be the rows object. Let me check. 
it's not the rose object. Yeah, let me create the rose object. Oops. Right. So when we assign the array object, the execute mini method is going to look at uh, each element and based on the element location, it's going to insert the value corresponding to the question mark position. So first element will go into the first question mark. Second element will go to the second question mark and so on. And if you have used uh, T-SQL before, the cursor object follows the uh, transaction rule. So we need to uh, run the commit statement to, to actually push the data to the table. And here I can actually insert another try except block. So here let's do this. Here I'll say that if I run it into an error, oops, this should be except exception, let's see. They want to roll back the uh, transaction. And here I'll print the error message. Should be e dot value. And finally, I can close the cursor connection and the database connection. So here I'll say that data import complete. And that's it. All right, now let's give it a try. So I'm going to press F5 to run the script. It should be pretty quick. All right, so here we have a, a name here. Driver name is not defined. Oh, so this should be driver name. Let me try again. All right, so the uh, data input is complete. And it was less than 0.5 seconds. All right, so if I run the slash statement, and here are the 22 records from my Google spreadsheets. All right, so this is everything I want to share in this video. And hopefully you guys found the videos for. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.